Welcome back to Roku Podcast, where we spotlight game changers, innovators, and those who turn their passions into legacy. Today, the guest is none other short of incredible. He's the best voice actor of our generation, a powerhouse, a man who left his stable career to chase his dreams, bringing characters to life. You might find him on many platforms, heard of him on many podcasts, with the voice that commands presence and the story that inspires. It's an honor to introduce the one. The only Chris Detuli. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And that was an amazing introduction. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm working on them. I'm working on them. I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, you know, uh, basically get as much information about our guests as possible so I can come up with a wonderful introduction because, I, you know, I just want to welcome you warmly into, you know, basically the Zero Cool podcast space. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. So we're going to get right into it with our opening question, Chris. Um, let's kick things off with a big one. And, um, you know, I want to share, why did you quit your job um, as a marketing director and pursue voice acting full time? You know, that's a bold move, right? It is. It is. Uh, so when I was young, my dad always told me, he said, Chris, I swear to God, when you're older, I see you talking to yourself in a padded room. And I just wanted to prove him right. So. Uh, yeah, the, the thing is, uh, yeah, I was a marketing director for like a big corporation. Uh, I was in that field for uh, about 13 years. Um, you know, I wasn't really happy. Like I was making, you know, some good, some good money. Uh, it was just, I don't know, like it, it wasn't my passion. Um, when I was younger, I was in, I did a lot of theater. I was in a few, um, shows on Nickelodeon way back then when they did the, the recording in, uh, Florida in Universal Studios. Uh, I was actually, yeah, there was a pilot for a show. Um, I don't like, I forget the name of it, but I was on it. It was uh, supposed to be like kids versus adults. I think that might've been the name of it, but they actually reformatted and turned to something else. I think it eventually became like wild and crazy kids, <laughs> uh, but I was on an episode of wild and crazy kids. Uh, I was on like back in Nickelodeon in the nineties. They had like the big help. I did that. And you know what? I just, I wasn't happy. And I remember the day, like I started doing like, a few free like radio plays. And then um, there was a website called Voice Acting Alliance. That was what I was getting, like some of like the free work. And then a publishing company heard my voice and one of the authors reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing the audiobook version of my book? I did it. I auditioned. I got it. And it was my first really big paycheck. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. Like I want to go all in. I want to do it right. So I got coaching. Um met with a few good coaches, met with a few not so great coaches, got scammed a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I just remember one day I was in my office and I was just looking around and I just said, I don't want to be here. And I like got up and talked to my boss and said, listen, I'm sorry, I quit. Like, I'm not happy here. I'm not happy with you. I think you're a very poor CEO. I think you're a poor manager and I'm going to go chase my dream. And I just walked out. Wow. Yeah. And I said, mm -hmm. so basically you Tom Cruise them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now, looking back, that probably wasn't the smartest idea because uh, I'm a single father. I was a single father and I had two daughters and I was living in like a kind of a small apartment. And I turned had three rooms and I turned one of the rooms into like a little makeshift studio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was hard because I had no income coming in. And I was still kind of like a little novice in the field. Not kind of, I pretty much was, I didn't have too much experience, but, um, I just said, no, I want to, I want to pursue my, pursue my dream. So I just kept pursuing, 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 and eventually I got an agent and I started getting more work and here I am today. Wow. wow. That is, man, that is an amazing story. I mean, you took basically, uh, you took a gamble, like, yeah, true gamble. To actually, man, I, I can't express like, so, you know, uh, for the audience uh, and the people who are viewing, uh, that's going to be viewing, right? Um, not everybody knows. So I'm active duty military. I'm still in the military. So thank you for your service. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I come from a military family. So, yeah. So, you know, um, doing uh, this podcast, man, I, I really have something to lean back on. And I admire those individuals that say, you know what? Screw it all. I, I'm, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm just going to pursue and move forward what my dreams are. Because there's a 
there's a level of urgency that you have to have, especially uh, betting on yourself and risking on yourself. And it seems that you did it. And man, things shook out for you in the long run. And man, I can't wait to get to that point where I uh, hang up uh, that uniform. And as I push forward in this, just give it my go. So man, uh, hats off to you, 100%. I do have yeah. a question um, that you answered before, but I just want the, I want the people to know. You said uh, Fatal, Fear, uh, uh, Fatal Fury, sorry. Uh, yeah. was the anime that uh, that first pulled you into the world. How did it shape your journey? And uh, for fans of the professional voice acting world, what was an actor that, uh, voice actor that you heard that you thought was like, man, that voice is pretty cool. I wonder who was doing that. So, uh, yeah, Fatal Fury, the motion picture, was the first anime I ever saw. And I remember it clear as day over my friend's house. He goes, oh, you got to check this out. He was big into anime and I had no idea. And I saw it and immediately I'm like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Just hearing like so many, like they capture the motions and, you know, like when they were screaming, they were really like screaming. Now, beforehand, this is like we didn't really have too much. We did have like the 1990s X-Men, which uh, was incredible in its own self. But it was just so much in that anime that captured so much passion and imagination that my friend said, like, yeah, this is all like hand drawn, like. It, this and he showed me all the all this other anime. I'm like, this is pretty cool. So I started going down that rabbit hole and just uh, thinking like, wow, people actually like they get like paid to do this. They get paid to come in and like talk dub over like the Japanese animation, the Japanese voice actors, and that just kind of like inspired me. And I, I dabbled here and there, but it wasn't till I saw Avatar: The Last Airbender, and just seeing that spark something in me um i'm not sure if it's true anime but still like that's just seeing the first three episodes something like that pulled me in i said right then there i'm like i want to be a voice actor like i'm that's when i sort of like chasing the dream and led me down they really like, sparked some creativity in me that made me go down that rabbit hole of voice acting and inspired me to be who i am today and i'm still a big huge nerd i actually have a still have a uh, the giant laser disc uh animes uh before there was dvds and like kind of right after there was vhs they had this huge laser disc that was probably like about this big the size of a dinner plate and it had maybe two or three episodes on it if you're lucky and you had to it over from japan yeah. and you had to find a specific like laser disc player it, it was like looking back it was super expensive and but like probably collectibles now yeah the kids would never understand the struggle <laughs> that you went through to actually record um, an anime or something that you enjoy. Man, they don't know the struggle. They would never understand. And I do understand what you're saying with um, um, the last Airbender, man, because that's a debate in um, a lot of anime circles, so, uh, circles especially online. Uh, people get v- real vicious with it. They're like, oh, Avatar is not an anime. And like some people are like, yes, it is. And man, I'm like, okay, uh, can we all come together and say this is an amazing work of art? Yeah. 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 And then so people, you know, try to be the mediator and come a lot of uh, yeah. uh, people down in uh, a lot of internet groups. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. And, you know, you also mentioned that Baxter Stampede, uh, you know, Trigun, for people who don't know, uh, that character you like uh, to be for a day. How would you think or how would you live um, by that code of peace and um, that strength, you know, applied to your your real life journey? So you always want to have the strength and courage to stand up to violence, stand up to hate, but you never want to go out and seek hate. And that's what I feel Vash is. He he doesn't want to kill. He doesn't he doesn't hate. He tries to live by a code, but just so many things come around him in all these circumstances. And I can kind of relate that. I mean, as I mentioned, I was a single father. Uh, My kid's mom just kind of, when my youngest daughter was born, up and left and haven't heard ever since. So I was a single father raising two daughters and I had a small apartment and then I quit my job and then I started to pursue voice acting and it was just all this hate and turmoil. So many people said like, you should knock it off. You should get a full-time job. Like what's wrong with you? You know, acting in the United States is a lot different than acting in like England because England is an actual like, not that it's not a profession here, but when you say in England, you're going to be an actor, they say, oh, OK, cool. It's like if you're going to be an electrician or if you're going to be a plumber, you know, it's it's an exciting trade and they take it a lot more seriously with in America. You're like, yeah, sure. What what restaurant do you work at? Pretty much. And 
I, I just, you know, love that, that he has the strength to stand up in the world full of chaos. And, you know, growing up, there's, especially now, there's so much hate and chaos. And if you just, like, not focus on the hate, you just focus on the love and you stand up to that. Because I was bullied. Um, a few of my friends, they were bullied because they were, um, because of their sexual orientation. I just wanted to keep PC with that. And I stood up to them and I got into like a number of scuffles with people like defending my friends because I don't like, I, I don't care to me. Love is love. And I just hated that. And, you know, I just always sympathized and related closely with Bash. Like, you know what he has, he stands up for his friends. He stands up for like, he just wants love. He doesn't want to hurt people, but if someone comes his way, better watch F out. <laughs> And also, I found that show because uh, in the 90s, there was a show on Nickelodeon called Salute Your Shorts. The guy who played uh, Ugg was actually the voice actor of uh, Bash's brother, Knives. You know, oh. you remember? Yeah, the dub. Yeah. So I, I, I just happened to find that out through a friend. I'm like, oh, really? Ugg's in this? I'm like, where's Ugg? Where's Ugg? Oh, wow. Cool. But like, then I got sucked into the anime. I'm like, oh, wow. John and Bosch is amazing. I see. The things you things you learn. You know, you've yeah. been on several like podcasts, right, before, and I'm sure you encounter all kinds of requests, right? So what's the funniest or most unexpected thing someone asked you to do during your interviews? The chase is they always say, oh, can you do Daffy Duck? Can you do Porky Pig? Oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And I say, well, no, I'm not an impressionist, you know, but do a voice for me. I'm like, this is my voice. This is how, like, because the one thinks, you know, like, if you say you're a voice actor, you have a, like, this crazy voice and you pull this character. So, yeah, I could do it. Yeah, I could do that. But, you know, it, it's, this is, like, kind of how I make my money. Somehow, you know, I started off doing commercials. Now I'm doing, uh, since the pandemic, I'm doing a lot of uh, medical narration, corporate narration, e-learning, which is, like, the uncool side of voiceover. But still, that's, it pays pretty well. And, um, you know, just that that's always a request. Like, do a voice for me. I'm like, hi, I'm Chris. I like cheese and pizza. I'm Italian. Like the chases, the chases, the chases. The yeah, chases. it's like it's like they're trying to make you be funny on command. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that's not good for anyone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, that, that's pretty funny though. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's always do a voice for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The chases, the chases. Um, in in voice acting. Uh, what's one piece of advice do you wish someone had given you when you first started? Um, you mentioned being scammed when you uh, kind of like first getting into voice acting. Yeah. How do you know that? Um, and how do you know now as a mentor, uh, you know, others trying to break into that industry, uh, what to say to them to convince them, one, that you're trustworthy, and then also just relay that information? So I always preach, uh, forgive the language, but I always say, yeah. like, don't worry about the bullshit. Ignore the bullshit. Like you're going to see some, some people say like, oh, I was in this show on this show, like flash all these credits, say they're in all this anime. And, um, unfortunately, I hope I don't get blackballed for this, uh, anime, like it's good for the soul. It, it doesn't really pay the bills. That's the best way I can put it. It's great to do. It's a marvelous marketing tool, but you know, they'll say like, oh, I done all this anime and now I could coach you. And I'm like, well, what are your qualifications? I always tell everyone research, 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 like. For me, a coach, it should be someone who's in the business for a minimum of 10 years. They're represented by several accredited agencies. They've done a wide variety of projects, not just anime, not just audiobooks, not just, I mean, they can have a niche, a niche, excuse me, um, for like, you know, audiobooks of that field, but they should do like a wide variety of things and also find references on them. Like, hey, you know. I'm just wondering, you work with this coach, like, what do you have? And if they just run a demo mill, which is just, you know, they come in, you make a demo, there's no coaching and goodbye, good luck. You got to watch out for that. So that's why I always say, do your research. Don't like give your money to someone who, you know, says like, oh, I could be a coach. I mean, yeah, I could be a coach, but I'm not qualified. I don't meet the qualifications for that. I haven't been in the, I mean, coming, I'll be in the industry for over a decade soon. But I, I don't mean that. I'm happy to mentor people. I'm happy to give out free advice. I, I just love helping people because it's such a giving community. And I just tell them, just research. Be humble. Do not get a big head. And most importantly, take direction well. Autumn, sometimes, you know, we may get offended when they say, like, sometimes people might make a comment 
like, oh, that sucked. You know, can you try it this way? Can you try it this way? And we kind of get like nervous, like, oh my God, am I horrible? Am I my bad voice actor? You know, we just got to realize, calm down. You know, obviously you're here because they like you. So they like your voice. They're going to work with you. And if you take direction well, you take humble. I mean, there's plenty of times because I also do on-camera projects as well. Uh, plenty of times where I've done voice work or on-camera work when they say like, you're, you're really easy to work with. And I said, well, thanks. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, I mean, maybe that was my father and me, you know, he was always a humble guy. He never like was every braggadocio or anything like that. He was like, oh, thank you. He was a very polite straight. Like, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, he, I mean, I knew he was like, he's an electrician. I knew, I knew he's like the best electrician I've ever seen. He cleaned up everyone else's work and just living by those values. I'm like, all right, you know, just never get like a big head because you go far. Uh, one of my coaches and friends and mentor, um, Mark Cashman, he's been in, has a number of awards. He has a number of credits under his belt, been in industry for decades. And he's the nicest person I've ever met. He's so humble. And he just like loves to help out. And I just kind of absorb that. I'm like, I just love to help out too. So yeah, I'm getting trailing off a little bit, but yeah. No, 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 no. Just be humble, you know, do your research on your coaches, stay hungry. I mean, and I'm going to say this, don't quit your day job till you're ready. Don't, don't do what I did. You know, uh, it's okay if you're working two full-time jobs. Yeah. I've done that for the longest time and I still do other work too, because there's times where voice acting, you know, sometimes they get, it's, you know, the highs are the high and the lows are the lows. I see a lot of times where people are saying, you know, like I've auditioned for so much. I've been at it for three years and I'm not getting anything. You know, I'm just going to throw the towel in like, no, don't give up. I mean, if this field was easy, everyone would do it. I mean, if being an electrician was easy, everyone would do it. Being a plumber was easy. Everyone would do it. No, it takes time to develop your skills. You're going to make mistakes. Just learn from them. Um, a fun hobby that I do is I have medieval armor, like leather armor and metal armor. And the guy who was mentoring me, he said, you know what? You got some experience. I'm like, what do you mean? I screwed up. He goes, that's what experience is. Life is tough. Life is a tough teacher because she gives you the test before the lesson. So when you screw up, that's experience. You now know what to do right. You learn from it, you go. So I did have a question though for you. Um, you said a minimum of 10 years, right? Why is that? I feel in a decade, they've been through the highs, they've been through the lows. They had a chance to do a wide variety of projects. Uh, I mean, sometimes people find success like immediately. I know a voice actor, Gabe Kunda, who's incredibly talented, like right off the bat, he, um, hit success and that's because he's incredibly talented like as soon as he made his demo and that's amazing for him but not everyone's journey is going to be the same i'm sure he could be a great coach right now i'm not saying he's not but you know a lot of people you know um i, I take a lot of business classes and they say one question they ask successful entrepreneurs is have you ever been broke before absolutely like i feel there's a chance where a coach has gone through a period of lows they've been almost broke maybe not to that extreme but you know to that extent, at least that, you know, they, they felt the lows of the industry and they felt the ultimate highs and that's enough to get enough experience under your belt. Like I wouldn't, uh, for an electrician, my father, you know, uh, he would say like, I've been in the industry for five years. My dad would go, all right, you don't know much. Yeah. A little messed up dad. He goes like, he goes, all right, they haven't gotten the lows. I'm like, where are the lows? You'll find out. My father, my father's a horrible coach, horrible teacher. Like he never thought, you know, but like, I listened to him carefully. Yeah, I was like, they don't know. Now I get it. Now I understand. So I say 10 years. So that way they get enough experience under their belt. They feel comfortable to say like, yeah, I've been there before. I know what you're going through. It, it feels relatable. Not just, I had nothing but success. What's that? You had a downtime. You're not getting any auditions. I've never experienced that before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you mean. Those, those people that make success or make success seem like it's so easy and so it, it is attainable through consistency, right? But like you said, you, you're going to have those highs and lows, especially doing what I'm doing, especially setting up my podcast. I have highs and lows consistently trying to get things, working with editors. Man, it is, it's crazy. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm a one man show because uh, I am married, but my wife doesn't know any of this. She's like, 
So even when I try to explain to her, especially spending extra time doing this, she's like, uh. So, yeah, I just leave her be. I leave her be. Yeah, but thank you for that. Um, you 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 know you have been a voice actor for many characters, but uh, you know um, but if you were to create an anime about your life, what would it be called, and what is unique about it, and over the top, what would you be your superpower if you know you had an um an anime series for that? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I would say the title would be. The, the crazy journeys of a fat Italian, uh, and just uh, I should say the crazy endurance of a plus size Italian. I'll put it that way, uh, <laughs> you know. And I would see my say my superpower would be the ability to read people's mind because that would be so helpful if I have that. Like, what is this director thinking? Like, what is this? <laughs> Give me an audition. What do you want? I don't get the right. okay. Well. Oh. So that would be, I'll, I'll talk about the frustration in a second, but that would be mine. It'd be like, you know, just kind of dealing with that, dealing with like, you know, this crazy world that we're living in, uh, the ability just to could read. But like the handicap, I would say is I could only read their mind for about 60 seconds. Give me some sort of handicap like that. Like, you know, so I only get partial. So I kind of have to make up the rest. Yeah. Kind of like there was a show with, um, I, I'm forgetting the actor's name. I'm going to feel bad. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy and, um, uh, the Hobbit. Um, he was in the TV show where he had the ability to resurrect people with one touch mm. and touch them again. They would die. I think Lee Pace. I think, I think that's who I'm thinking about. I think so. I'm trying to think. I could be wrong. Like he played the main elf in um, The Hobbit. Okay. Um, and he was um, the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's going to come to me afterwards. But, you know, because uh, I always felt like that's a great power, but that's a really bad handicap. So I thought, like, all right, I can only read minds for 60 seconds because otherwise I'm o- always super powerful. If not, that superpower would be to create multiple copies of myself and then I'd be able to do all this other activity, learn as much as I can. And then at the end of the day, they have to be absorbed into me and I would obtain the knowledge. The only handicap is I would have horrible headaches every night. The chases- I put a lot of thought in this, so it's always... Cause I want like, not like a, a one, like, Oh, I want to be Superman. Like, no, like, you know, let me, let me give me like a reasonable superpower. Maybe one day it will come true. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted to have a superpower of like the ultimate luck. Like I always look out in every situation, but you know, like, uh, I know, I'm not sure if you ever watch, um, one punch man. Yeah. So, so with one punch man, what's his name? Um, the chase. Uh, um, he has the something engine. Um, he's the number two strongest. Uh, he has like three claws right here. And oh, his name, jeez, man, it's, it it come back to me. Yeah, it come back to me. But basically, um, you know, a lot of people have theorized that his superpower is actually luck because he always faced these villains. But uh, one punch man actually comes in and destroys him, but no one knows, and he gets credit for it. So. Uh, <laughs> So he he does it he does it he doesn't do anything. So everybody like theorized that his his superpower actually is his incredible luck. And I was like, I would love to have that. I love that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a good superpower. Yeah, just incredible luck in situations. So yeah. we're getting to the hard part of this with the questions like, you know, um, the chases, the yeah. chases, the chases. The Who chases. are your top four voice actors the if chases. you had to put them on Mount Rushmore? Of voice acting and why? Uh, Steve Bloom, Steve Mark Bloom. Rowe. Let's see. The you already had this list ready. I already had it. Yeah, yeah. Because the uh, Steve Bloom, I just remember the first video game I pl- played on the PlayStation was uh, Brave Fence of Musashi, and he played one of the main characters. I'm like, who is that guy? He's really the uh, the uh, definitely Frank Welker. Uh, of course, I, I I have to put him. Let's see. That's three. I'm thinking of one more. I would say Mark Hamill. But uh, I still appreciate him as a voice actor. And I'll go with Mark Hamill. I appreciate him as a as a voice actor. The chase is- so if you had to argue your way onto the Mount Rushmore, what's the case that you would make for yourself? The chase is- the for myself, chase- uh, I would have to say, you know, I love helping people out. I give out plenty of free advice, which probably a lot of coaches hate me. <laughs> but I never give like the advice they give me for a paid session. I never give that out. Okay. Um, I'm pretty humble. I'm easy to get along with. I take direction very well. 
And uh, all around, I'm just a friendly guy and I'll bring you a bowl of pasta. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. So, so you actually, do you make fresh pasta? I uh, Not since I moved from my apartment because my pasta maker broke. Okay. But uh, I make homemade sauce. It's my mom's sauce. So. Okay, okay. Can eat mom's sauce. I, I learned from um, a friend of mine's, um, my friend of mine's and his wife. His wife is German-Italian. So when we was living in Germany, we used to make our own pasta all the time. And she taught um, us how to make pasta. And man, um, easy process, depending on, I guess, what type of pasta you're making, right? Right. Um, but man, uh, very rewarding, but I don't want to do that. And she made it fresh almost every day. And I was like, geez, God, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you it's, it's like, funny. My wife's German-Italian, too. Huh? So... Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's this, so is she? Um, so she's like literally from Germ- Germany, or no? She's not. She was born here. Uh, her grandparents are just like me. Uh, but she's a phenom. She's an amazing cook, and she's a phenomenal baker. She was actually a professional baker. She had her own business for a while too. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, uh, every time it's my birthday, I just have one request. I'm like, can you make me a peanut butter pie? Like that. That's that's. All I want, you know, the chase. That that's it. The no, I got it. The chase. I got you. Just like when we go visit them all the time, she's always baking and and giving us. Like I'm like, girl. Every time I come over here, I'm always yeah leaving three pounds heavy. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> and all of it is so good. So I I get you. Oh man. So basically, your accomplishments and you you have accomplished so much already. But what is the next move for you? You know, um, what's your dream uh, project or goal? that you're currently chasing? chasing. So um, wanting to get more involved with, uh, more involved with an anime on Crunchyroll. Uh, I have done, a, I have done anime in other productions. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, even though I say it doesn't pay well, it's just like, just cross off like a childhood dream. I would love to do work for uh, Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon um, and be involved in a Final Fantasy game. That's just, you know, uh, yeah, first uh, I Came across Final Fantasy VII. That was always like a special place in my heart. Really? I remember crying like a baby when Aerith got killed. Now um, I'm, I'm such a because I'm so busy. I haven't. I still haven't got a PS5, even though I'm on some games that are on PS5. Um, and I have. Uh, I haven't gotten the second game yet. Okay. Do you know what? Do you know all the games that you're on for PS5? Um, I they're being released. And I still, oh. I could say I was involved on games on PS5. I can't say what they are. It, it's, it, it's I mean, when you get NDA, which are non-disclosure agreements, like, yep. you know, I actually ask, like, hey, you know, I actually reach out. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm wondering, like, I'm going to be on a podcast. What can I mention? Can I mention anything? They say, you can mention that you're involved in the game. You can't mention this. So I make sure I get complete co- clarification on it. So and it's not like, you know, uh, it's just it's an independent party that they're doing it. And, uh, or excuse me, an, yeah, an indie studio. Um, they just want to knock out a few things, like a few bugs and everything. They ran through beta testing. So um, there's that. Uh, but I would say uh, there's a video game I was in called Amago Beyond the Nightmares. A mm-hmm. uh, buddy of mine uh, lives in Italy. He uh, created the game. I voiced every single uh, male character. And that was just so fun because... It pulled a lot of emotion out of me, and uh, it, it it was just <laughs> so much fun. And you know, like crying as two different people and two completely different voices. It was just, it was just wild. Okay, okay. So, Chris, before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to promote or talk about for yourself? And the floor is yours. Share your uh, projects, shout outs, or your thoughts, and leave with our listeners. Sure. Uh, I'm on a show recently called The Godfather of Fentanyl. I play Louis Cirillo. I believe it's on, uh, I think the app's called Fox Nation. I'm not, I believe it is. Uh, you can get like a free seven day subscription with that. Uh, please check out Kansu Fighter uh, from Cesarean Studios, Amago, Beyond the Nightmares. Uh, it's just a few projects. I mean, I just love helping my buddies out because they created the game. I voiced it. And I also want to talk about, you know, all support voice actors right now there's a strike going on with video games and it's because they want to bring ai into video games and you know ai is not going to take job away people who use ai are going to take jobs away and that's not just for voice acting it's with artwork 
I mean, how many times we look on TikTok and we see like, oh, you know, AI sketches you as an anime. That's like taking jobs away. There was actually a big lawsuit against TikTok with a voice actor using her voice. Uh, that's for a different time. But, you know, support your local businesses, your local artists. And, um, you know, just AI is such like the devil's tool. <laughs> but, you, you know, but I, I shouldn't say there's some ways where it does help out. You know, when it comes to video games, bringing the pe people's passions to life, AI will never be able to rep reciprocate or to be able to copy a voice actor's passion. I mean, I sincerely doubt AI can caption, can capture um, Ellie's voice from The Last of Us Part Two. Mm -hmm. When that, I don't want to say it, but that when that scene happens, it, it will never be able to capture that passion, that ocean that voice actors give out. And that changed the tone immediately. I actually hear commercials and I listen like, oh, they used AI. My wife goes, how do you know? I'm like, well, listen to the tones. Like, no one's talking like that. Like, I could hear. Like, there's certain, like, I know for um, us Italians, like, we speak like we're singing a song. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like every every single state has their own unique accent. Like, I'm, obviously, I'm from Jersey. You can hear my Jersey accent. Water, coffee, you know. When going to LA, I have to say water, Kofi, you know, I still can't, you know, I go to Minnesota and I just say, oh, okay. All right, Dan. It's just kind of, <laughs> so that's it. Just, uh, you know, support against, support the strike, support the voice actors who are striking against, you know, using AI. Yeah. So Chris, thank you so much for sharing your story, your passion, your wisdom with us today. It's Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. No problem, man. Uh, for the listeners, make sure you check out Chris's latest projects and follow his journey. He is amazing. Uh, go on his website. Uh, we have all the links in the show notes. So once this episode posts, go into the links, support his website, support everything that he's doing. He's an amazing individual. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations on the Zenroku podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Peace. Peace out. <laughs>